This conference will now be recorded. All right. Good morning, everybody. This is Greg Morton. It is Sunday, February 13th, 2022. This is weekend update for the Greenville Eastside IBD meetup group and the Stockyard meetup group. As always, educational purposes only. Not recommend any stocks or securities to buy or sell. And obviously, especially right now, all investing has substantial risk of big losses. So we want to learn first and only then invest. So today we'll look at the M factor, red light or yellow light. Um, definitely not green light. Current trading plan, um, growth train wreck continues. Leading sector setup status, we'll kind of look at where some of the rotation is going. And then Stockyard Educational Monthly Meeting um, review and status. So as always, M's most important letter in Can Slim. Bill gives us the three things we look at. Action of leading stocks, they're getting hit. Actions of stocks owned, not even much, maybe about 30% invested. And then market pulse, distribution, day count, price and volume on the indexes. Um, things are just worsening uh, this week. So we had a day six follow through day on Monday a week ago, sort of two weeks in, sort of had to squint to see it. I'm calling it still the squinty follow through day. Just last minute volume push got us there. Um, still a lack of canceling bases and bases setting up. That's been the flaw, that remains the flaw. And if we do see a breakout in a growth trade, not getting any traction um, for the most part. So let's get out of here. Let's look at the index charts um, and the coloring book. So here's the index charts. So here's the NASDAQ. Um, here was our follow through day right there. I put a dotted line at the low of the follow through day. Undercutting that is not good. We did undercut it. Um, if it closes below that follow through day low, well over a 90% chance that this rally is going to fail. A failure officially will be when we undercut this low back here, the 1,3094.65, but um, not looking good right now. This week, we actually had a subsequent follow through day on Wednesday, and then things promptly fell apart, just cascading down on Thursday and Friday. We're below all moving average lines. We're below the 10% correction line right there. Um, RS line still trending down under the 50-day moving average on the RS line, which we can now put on there with our new MarketSmith tool. And IBD switched back to yellow or under pressure on Friday. Um, you can see the 50-day <clears throat> moving average line is still diving down toward the, or at least heading down toward the 200-day and looks like it's going to cross over if that trend continues. S&P 500, it doesn't look any better. Here is our follow through day. Um, under all moving average lines again, they're not stacked in the correct order. 50 days trending down. Um, volume picked up these last two bad days as the market cascaded down. Nisey under all moving average lines, even though the RS is, is moving up. So this one's a little more of a pocket of strength or resilience probably a better word. Dow, under all the moving average lines, you can see where the follow through day was. Russell, actually, I don't think it was as um, down as much this week. Let's look at weekly. Might even have been up. Yeah, it was actually up a little bit for the week. But um, still, under all moving average lines, and it's actually closest, closer to a bear market and, and went under that previously. Then the other index is S&P 600. Um, maybe holding the 10 day, but really for all intents and purposes, you know, sort of below all the moving average lines, 50s crossed over the 200, um, just not constructive. And then the, let's look at the coloring book. Um, so we can see IBD went to yellow, NYSE's flipped back to yellow, S&P 5 flipped to red, and these others are very close to flipping to red. I think the only thing that held up a lot of them was the 10-day moving average was still just barely up. And so once it turns down, we're already under the 21-day um, exponential moving average by 1% or more. The 21 days turned down. So if we have another down day on Monday, um, we'll see several of these, or at least a couple of them, I think will flip down to red. 
have only eight buying days, 13 selling days in our last 25 day window. Got a lot of distribution here, um, three days and one, two, in the last five days. So if we get distribution on the NASDAQ Monday, Tuesday or Wednesday, we will have clustering because we'll have four and eight, which is kind of like four and eight trading days, sort of like distribution on steroids. Um, if we get a couple more, if we get two more on the S&P 500, we could see clustering there also, as well as even over on the Dow. And the, the white distribution day count is the last 25 day window. Um, IBD quits counting once they go into correction, which was way back here, but I still track it. And that's what the, the white numbers are. So we still have you know seven days on the NASDAQ in the last 25 day window. So um, still fairly heavy. Official count is three and the official count on the S&P 500 is two. So that's where we are there. Let's go back to slideshow. So we had another wild week, you know, a week ago, we had Facebook, you know, face planted on Thursday, and then you had Snap that was down 23% one day and up 58% on Friday. So just a lot of wild stuff. This week, I would say the growth trade pretty much got whacked again. Um, a firm got the Darwin Award for the week. They tweeted their financial results early intraday instead of waiting till after the close like they had announced. And they caught two 20% plus down days in a row on Thursday and Friday. So that was not very pretty. Um, current wall of worry, you know, I said the market climbs a wall of worry until it doesn't. So how many and how big now on the rate hike front, um, some of the banks are saying we're going to have seven. So that referring to seven quarter point, meaning some of those could even be half point. So we'll just see we are only a month away um, from that next Fed meeting. Inflation setting some long term records. Um, certainly a good thing they dropped the word transitory allegedly because we didn't understand it. I, I kind of understand it as opposite of long term. Um, so not good. Balance sheet tightening coming. Um, got Russia and Ukraine obviously in the headlines and China and Taiwan below the fold in the headlines. So in light of all that uh, for the growth stock trade, I think it's red light conditions, even though IBD is just under pressure. I'm viewing it like this. Where's the rotation going? Obviously, it's been going and is going to oil and gas as oil prices go up, as well as natural gas prices, particularly internationally already. Um, we see some rotations to fertilizers, chemicals, some to metals and minerals. You can look at the Alcoa chart for one that's doing very well. And then sort of the travel, maybe I should have said slash reopen in place. Um, some of the hotels and some of the travel sites have showed a little bit of strength recently if one's taken any additional exposure in light of the red light conditions. And always just to keep in mind, canceling works better when the NASDAQ is trending above an uptrending 50 day SMA line, works best when we're trending above an uptrending 21 day EMA line and the, the power trend comes back on in the market school model. We are still in a um, very hostile environment. So well below better and best that we are looking for. So a couple charts, um, lots of damage out there. Let's see what I put in here this weekend. So here were some ugly ones. Um, SLQT, let's look at the weekly, down 55% for the week on a recent IPO, not very pleasant. NEWR, New Relic, down 30% for the week, you know, former growth stock name that was covered in IBD, although it was losing money. Um, so it wasn't one I was ever really interested in. A firm um, down 26% for the week, but if we look at the daily chart, there's two 20% plus down days when they, Thursday was when they tweeted their financial results out early and then immediately yanked it off Twitter um, after people had seen it and some people had pictures of it. Um, Goodyear Tire and Rubber, that's an ugly earnings day, down 28% almost. And Regeneron, this I put in was just one of the few um, 
showing a little bit of strength. You can see the RS line there is, is almost in new highs compared to back here, not compared to all the way back here. Coming through a, a sloping trend line, had earnings this week, um, you know, solid can slim stock with triple digit earnings and growth, but you know, everything struggles um, when we're in a bear market. So we'll see what it does. Kind of tightened up nicely there on the weekly and on the daily, tightened up in here for a few days on declining volume. You see at the bottom of the page. So that is, you know, if you want to see constructive price and volume action, you can look at those three days right in there, four days, um, really tight for the, the last couple of those. And even a tight close on sort of that um, more volatile. I think that was maybe earnings day, um, or maybe it's a little further back. Sorry, a little further back, week before. Um, so that's where it is. Good volume this week, decent close. So had to throw in something <laughs> attractive because there's not much out there. So our monthly meetings, uh, we met this past week on Tuesday. Here was the agenda. It was actually February 8th. I have the date wrong there, but we looked at the um, M factor, secondary indicators. We looked at recent nuggets from IBD Live, talked about that new Market Smith tool, putting a moving average line on your RS line, and kind of told you what I was using, and we'll see how that works. And then we had three educational topics. One of them was on follow through days, rally day, historical bear markets. We spent the most time there. I did cover Reg A. These are the mini IPOs or Reg A plus as it's referred to now, hero or zero. So we talked about that. And then we talked about bottoming bases. And I actually put the recording of this part of the meeting out on Twitter because I had some questions from IBD, for IBD, as I thought they, they had some of this incorrect as I was looking at the historical examples in the paper. So we'll see, um, David Saito Chung will respond to that at some point in time. Looked at the group teaching portfolio, did post analysis, mentioned the IPO market, and looked at some watch list stocks, which weren't very many, and looked at some charts you guys wanted to look at. So our next meeting will be Tuesday, March 15th, 2022, 7 p.m. Eastern. Um, coincidentally, that is the first day of the Fed meeting. So that's where we're going to get the rate increase the next day. So we'll just see what happens. Agenda, we'll look at bear market follow through day precedents. Obviously, we're going to continue that study, do some post analysis, talk about IPOs, and I'll um, add in another educational topic. Maybe we'll go back and look at a historical base and study something. Sign up at the Stockyard Meetup site. Our monthly meetings are 12 bucks. These are two hour meetings and are um, educational. They're not a social club. And that includes the recording and slide deck. Um, if you don't sign up to attend the meeting and want it after the fact, it's a little higher just because of the administrative burden. So it's easier to just sign up for the meetings. And if you're a first timer, I'll send you a courtesy copy of the February meeting recording slide deck. And I sent out links to several articles related to the topics that we covered at that meeting. So here's a list of our prior meetings. Um, great time to study while this market's so bad. So if you don't have a set of written sell rules, I spent three meetings covering that and helping you write your own set of sell rules. So those are really important if you don't have that. And then recently um, did a complete weekend routine in September. If you don't have that, I covered it in detail, walking through the newspaper, using the Growth 250, that sort of thing. Um, followed up on that in October. Then we talked about building conviction, went through the rally day and follow through day in system in December. We've been touching on that actually each month, very pertinent now. Looked at prior bear markets in January, and then I just gave you the agenda for February. So any questions, here's contact information. Join the two meetup sites. This is the official IBD one, the Greenville East side, and then the Stockyard meetup site is the um, one I run to coordinate the online meetings. You can email me if you're interested in ordering prior webinars. Just say you're interested. I'll send you the list. Ordering instructions, follow me on Twitter, or you can look at my YouTube page. Um, here's what the resources look like. So here's the Stockyard Meetup site. It looks like that, and you can RSVP for meetings there. Greenville Eastside site looks like this. If you'll go to the More tab, and then Message Boards. All the links to group teaching portfolio, coloring book, that sort of thing are uploaded here each weekend. 
YouTube page looks like this. So like and subscribe if you go there. Here's the um, part I clipped out of our meeting on the bottoming base and where I covered that and what I thought it meant versus what they've been saying in the newspaper recently. So that's it. Y'all have a um, great weekend routine. Hang in there. Keep grinding. Um, difficult time, but our weekend routine stays the same. That's how we can kind of see where the rotation is and pick up on it um, when it rotates back to growth. And keep studying the the Nasdaq. If this rally fails, um, we'll actually be in the third leg down, which could be constructive. Um, more like a traditional bear market. So maybe we get that and then finally down the road at some point, who knows when, I don't know when, um, we'll see the growth stocks setting up, we'll see some RS lines improving and maybe we'll turn the corner. But whether that's one week, one month or one year, I have absolutely no idea. Um, just have to keep studying it. You guys have a great weekend routine and see you next weekend.